The Thames is London. The way it snakes over the northern part of the borough defines the borough boundaries. And when the water recedes, there is often much treasure to be found. Every low tide brings fresh debris to the banks, rubbish scattered and strewn in an order, albeit random, only nature could dictate. Now as children, we all dream about how lovely it would be to find some secret treasure amongst this rubbish here on the beach. Now I've met someone who actually finds messages in bottles almost every day. Nicola White is a mudlarker who patrols the banks of the river and finds many things. Mudlarking is looking for little pieces of history, pieces of treasure on the foreshore of the River Thames. It's the secret stories of all the little things that I find. It's just fascinating to think of the stories that these things have. What things have you found whilst mudlarking? Um, I found a lot of old coins, buttons, military cap badges, a lot of Victorian things and I did also find part of a human skeleton along with a jawbone a um, little further down the river which we then reported to the police and it was probably from about the 1650s. And can anyone go mudlarking? You have to have a licence from the Port of London Authority. You don't need a licence if you're just walking along the foreshore and looking, but once you start scraping, it's absolutely imperative that you have a licence. Great. Well, should we go and have a look at what you found? Yes, absolutely. So, Nicola, what have we got here? Well, one of the things that I have found quite a lot of uh, along this stretch of foreshore is uh, some messages in bottles. You know, I'm actually amazed how many you have here. I know, I've got about 40 now. It's so exciting because, especially now in this era of emails and texts, it's not often that you actually get a handwritten letter. So Absolutely. It's really quite exciting. The first message I found was from a little boy called Finn Q, who's 12, and he actually lives on a barge further up the river in Southwark. This is one of my unsolved mysteries. It's from a little girl called Madison. It's Madison. It just says Madison. It says, hello, my name is Madison. I live in London. I'm eight years old. I put a note in a bottle and would like the person who finds it to let me know where it was found. And I have tweeted it out several times, but so far, no luck. This one is a bit of fun. I like this one. Yes. It says, try everything at least once, except, you know, illegal stuff. Duh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Daniel of Canary Wharf. That's brilliant. Great advice there from Daniel yeah, yeah. of Canary Again, Wharf. Again, don't know who Daniel is, no? but it uh, would be great to find out. Yeah. <laughs> there is one that I really yeah, would like to have an answer to. Okay. And it's these two very curious messages I found in two separate bottles, actually, on the same day. And they're just fingerprints and some Chinese writing. Wow. And that's all there is on them but it would be great to have a little bit of background on, mm. on the meaning of these. They're absolutely fascinating, Nicola. Do you reckon we're going to find any messages in bottles here today? Uh, looking at the conditions, probably not. I can't see a lot of debris washed up, but there's no harm in trying. Let's go and have a look. Okay, great. Right. So what are we actually looking for here? Generally, what you find along the banks of the River Thames reflects the activities that, that went on along it. For example, here, there's a lot of shipbuilding um, right. that went on. Also here, there's quite a lot of military pieces, old spent bullets, um, cat badges, sort of World War II, really, left, left over from there. Really, it's about getting your eye in. You'd be surprised how much you can find in just a tiny area. So we've had a good look, but unfortunately not found anything today. Not really the right conditions, or? No, it's a bit sludgy, which means uh, it's very difficult to see what's on the surface. So we've seen how dangerous it can be this morning, potentially getting stuck in the mud here. How safe is it? Uh, well, you've got to be very aware of your surroundings. It's advisable when mudlarking to go with another person for obvious reasons. The Thames is tidal, the tide can come up very quickly, the mud can be deep. There are groups that do do mudlarking. There's a group called the Thames and Field, which you can get involved with, where you go with a group of people who are experts who can give you advice. So if you're thinking of mudlarking, it's probably quite a good idea to get involved with an organised group. Well, thank you, Nicola. It's been absolutely fascinating. I definitely think I'm going to join a group or perhaps come again with you sometime and hopefully find a message in a bottle next time. Excellent. You're Thank welcome. you so much. Anytime. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>